It's not over. Stop the fight! No! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody. Kill everybody. I'm the champ. I'm the king. Kill everyone. Ah! All right, guys. With a break week in the UFC, I wanted to take some time to recap stats and just our overall betting record and tips I think I can hand back to you guys to help your success uh, in, in betting. So uh, um, first, I just want to talk about transparency. Um, I think it's super important that we be clear with how we are doing with you guys. We've been on this recent streak, 15 points something units, currently 12 positive. We actually were negative at one point. But uh, we've actually implemented some strategies from uh, looking back at all of our mistakes. And uh, I think we really started to nail down a pattern here to get away from dumb betting. So uh, I'm going to get into this, the, the things that I know that are important uh, to our success and to our failure. So let's get into it. All right, guys, before we get into everything, I just want to quickly say leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we got this win streak going for you guys. We want to keep these units pouring in, but we also want you guys' support. And uh, hit that subscribe button, and let's keep it going. First, we want to work ahead. So what I mean by working ahead is, uh, for example, we just came off this Duran versus Jan card. We have two weeks until the next UFC card, um, three weeks until UFC 280, and we have other cards ahead. Um... So, for example, I'll show you guys some of the bets that are ahead. Uh, you know, for example, I'll go to the Grasso and Draho card. Um, what I like to do is I like to write down names of people I think are going to win before I've even seen the odds released. I know some books got to have these odds out there. But uh, having these already down and maybe even, you know, next to these, assign a number that you think somebody's going to be at. Daniel Rodriguez, I think that he'll probably win that fight against Neil Magny. I'll set a number at minus 160. You know, if he's over under that number, that's kind of where the range we're looking for him at. And if that value's not there, it can be really bad. Same thing with round betting. You know, look at Nick Maximov in that car, in that fight. That round thing could be completely screwed. I don't know what it's going to be set at, but I want to look for value in that. I just, like, have notes further ahead of where you want to be. Um, I'll pull down this page a little bit. You guys can kind of see all these cards I got prepared ahead of time. Um, prepared to go, sticking to a game plan there. Um, so then 280, for example. Here's all the stuff I have put for 280 so far. Get everything lined up that we have so far. Um, full game plan in place. And uh, I'm prepared to make all those bets. Or I made all, the, all those bets and I'm prepared to do more. So... Um, you know, st working ahead is a great way to get your odds on these and also be ahead of everyone else. My second piece of advice is sticking to the game plan. Okay, the reason why I mentioned sticking to the game plan is because betting is full of degenerates. Um, you know, week by week, we all have some degenerate play that we want or want to do and have fun with. And it's fun, but you have to think, in the end, you're going to lose. Do the math on it. Um, you're probably not successful at it. Um, that's why we do the spreadsheets. You stick to the game plan, and you can have more success there. Um, also, foreshadow your live betting. You know, do, do these things that uh, will set you ahead. I mean, I, I've had degenerate bets before where I'm, you know... I'm doing positive on our sheet, but I add in a couple other dumb ones. Well, I've started just to stick to the sheet and have more success. So uh, sticking to the game plan is a very important part of, uh, of this uh, process. My third piece of advice, do not bet on low-level MMA and specifically women's fights and heavyweights. Okay, here's an example of after every week I calculate where we kind of stand with straight bets on each weight class. Um, it's not terribly negative for the women's one, but it's actually just the worst way to lose your money. You're going to be pissed off. It's not going to go your way, and uh, it's frustrating to have low fight IQ fighters. Um, heavyweight, also a negative section. Those units we've mostly lost on that area 
are low level things. Sergey Pavlovich was this win, a little bit higher level uh, fighter. But for the most part, I think you're finding the sweet spot in these these four weight classes: featherweight, bantamweight, or flyweight, bantamweight, featherweight, lightweight, welterweight. Those five. I think those are the the most consistent weight classes. They have the highest sample size. Um, they're not going to get tired as easily as other weight classes. It's kind of easier to get a read on who has the better grappling wrestling ability. Um, and for example, you know, welterweight is our highest highest earning weight class. Right behind that, white lightweight, or actually, sorry, flyweight's the highest earning. But like, again, bantamweight puts on a lot of competitive fights. Um, some of these weight classes are going to be close, but in general, the heavyweight and woman's straw weight is going to how you're how you're going to lose the the money the easily easiest. So uh, let me skip to some other examples here. Okay, for example, on this card, Santos versus Hill, we lost stupid units behind Zach Paga, who I thought at the time was a good fighter. Um, honestly, I still think he's okay. But the unpredictability of heavyweight that anyone can knock anyone out, people make mistakes, people slow down. Um, this was a bad unit we lost, an example of a heavyweight fighter. Another example of a bad heavyweight fight was Dante Mays and that fight versus Hamdi that he had. You don't want to trust those results. Um, here's another example of a women's MMA fight that burned us. Uh, we had Jasmine Judavicious, uh beating this girl here and she was big favorite clearly shouldn't have been the favorite actually another one i'll skip to back in the santos hill was the brogan walker bet i felt foolish placing that after seeing the fight i really was convinced that she was the better fighter i fucking said in the breakdown you know she's got to stop body lock takedowns if she wants to stay on the feet she couldn't stop those it was the only way uh juliana Juliana miller was getting people to the ground and uh, you're just going to lose your money in a painful way. Uh, I will stay. I will say round betting can still be on the board for chick fights. Um, I have an example. The Sanhagen card. I mean, Maria Agapova, that one felt pretty obvious. That one's going to go under 2.5. Denise Gomez, Loma Lukbumi, over 2.5. Kind of predictable, you know. The round the round bets still have an ability for you to chase those chick fighters. Otherwise, kind of avoid that that mess. My fourth piece of advice is to round bet. Okay, when running numbers on round betting, I have noticed... I I mean, I I just ran these up and I've noticed, you know, a crazy amount of winning from this. And our props category has had a lack of winning in certain sections. So uh, I kind of closed down the problem that we were making and a lot of it was method of victory bets... But for the most part, round betting is our most successful category, largely. Um, It's an easy way to predict fights. I mean, are they going to go over this? You know, typically you can see it just on their record. If they go to decision, you might not even need to do all the research. Um, And matchups, you know, do they both have good jujitsu? Blah, blah, blah. It kind of lines up. And on these last however many weeks, we've gone positive on the prop section, like, heavily. So, uh, uh... Straight betting can be straight round betting can be a little bit tougher, but parlaying and I especially like parlaying under round bets. Uh, you sweat them a little bit less. It's a little more exciting when people win. Um, that's a good way. And then also try a fighter in rounds. You know, if you are confident in a fighter and you're confident in a fight will go under or over, work that um, and get that profit. I think this is this is the category people forget about, and it's it's the most profitable session, especially for us. Okay, we were just on the Dur- the Yan card. Here we have round bet, round bet, positive, positive, round bets, round bets, positive, positive, both win. It's, you can get way, a way better gut feeling out of round betting as well. You can tell uh, people's aggression, the this, this, uh, size of the cage. These things lead into to giving you a, a pretty good feeling of where that stands. Um, again round bets uh that led there fighter rounds fighter and rounds round bets round and fighter i mean these strategies they work uh fighter and rounds round bets it's one loss over however many weeks i mean it's kind of in the pudding there um 
I mean, check in with other other accounts. Run their numbers. Uh, round betting is much easier way in a close fight to pick an outcome. It's more, a little bit more predictable. Um, try it out. Uh, also, if you want, tail you know tail our round bets. It's our most successful category. Next one. Don't bet method of victories unless the outcome is obvious. Okay, I want to take you guys to an example of where I think one was obvious. Hamzat Shemaya by sub. This one lined up perfectly uh, for the submission. Hamzat's ground game, Kevin Holland's ground, ground game, it doesn't add up to it. Um, H- Holland never been knocked out before. Holland's been submitted before. It all lines up to say, okay, there's a submission here. Uh, at great odds, you gotta take a stab at it. Other prop, I didn't like that I played. Aldana by KO. That fight was not headed to a knockout until that one kick. Um, it was a bad bet. Even I didn't say that even after it won. It was not a good bet. Um, and it wasn't obvious. So I've tried to stick away, stay away from these stupid, uh, stupid mindset of some of these uh, bets here. Here's another good example of something being obvious. Josh Twinlin by knockout. Jason Witt got knocked out by a ton of people. Twinlin has good knockout power. Him by KO, plus money. Pretty easy play, right? Um, Ode Osborne by points. Not very obvious. Not the most obvious. He can knock out people. Um, I played a little bit too much on it and uh, lost because of it. Uh, Yasmin, the newcomer, thought she would get a knockout. I tried to play it. Wasn't obvious. Lost the money. Okay, final method of victory example. Um, Salikov by decision. Wasn't obvious even that he would even win. Um, not a good bet. Schnell by sub. Somewhat obvious. I mean, Sue had been submitted times before. That was his only way he's ever lost. The odds are at plus 800. Um, should I have got that win? Probably not. I mean, Sue got his ass beat. But it's also the obvious outcome for an underdog. Um, you know, watch out for those types of things. Bill Algio versus Herbert Derns. I thought since Algio on his record had a lot of decision victories, it would lead into that. But I forgot to think about, you know, Herbert Burns is not that durable. Um, wasn't an obvious result. Uh, Brian Ortega, Yair Rodriguez, wasn't an obvious result for a submission. Even though it was an injury, maybe it tried to lead there, not obvious. Okay, next, parlays, parlay strategy, two bets at plus money. Okay, I've talked about this for a couple weeks, and it's really something I've enjoyed doing uh, from betting here. Um, So what I like to do, we're just going to look at the parlay section, not the prop bets and parlays. Round betting gets a little bit more loose, you can win a little bit more, but just parlays. If you're making parlays here, you should really only make one or two parlays. What I really like about two parlays at plus money is that you're giving yourself a chance to make your money back if you lose one. So, for example, this bet lost, we're minus one, this bet wins, we're positive on the night. Um, If both win, we go home big. If both lose, we lose just a little bit more, but hopefully we can make it up over time. Um, I think over time, this has been a little bit more successful. Here's an example of one bet. Uh, Really wasn't obvious to mix and match too many people that were good on that card. Uh, But here's another one. Two bets at plus money. You go home positive getting both of them. Uh, I think I got another good example down here somewhere. UFC 276. Uh, You got two bets at plus money. Come in with this one and this one. You go home nice. Um, Obviously, that one had a void, which doesn't end up at plus money. But um, overall... If you're parlaying five things together, you're going to lose. Um, the best example of this is when we try to predict too many fighters correct, we get destroyed. So our pitch percentage, I think it's in it's like 62%, something not that not a crazy good. Um, know your pitch percentage. Know that you can't get every single fighter right. And making two leg parlays, this is one of the dumbest things that we ever did. Making two leg parlays on like eight different people is really fucking stupid. Um, obviously, a lot of those are going to lose. Narrow those down to even more confident, and uh, do better there. And on our, I believe this is yeah, this is our biggest losing card. We parlayed a bunch of people t- together that doesn't match our pitch percentage. 
you know, if you if you can't get eighty percent of these right, you're not gonna you're not gonna win all these parlays. So narrow down the parlays and uh, you know tighten it up a little bit and drop some people off it if necessary. So um, yeah, that's some parlay strategy. Okay, next we're gonna parlay the most trustworthy fighters together. Okay, back to Gon versus Tuavasa. There's a good example here of uh, a newcomer and a guy who can still fight someone with knockout power in Buckley. Um, we want to put the people that we think are the strongest combination together and then have a parlay, the other at plus money, to try to shoot for. So if we want to try to lock in one of these. Um, and Whitaker and Gon felt like easy wins, and Benoit St. Denis facing a guy who... In all aspects, we thought he was better in, in and he was. Um, that's an easy place to win in. Uh, losing in those categories of just having a bad and a good fighter together is is an easy way to drop money, and uh, I'm sure there's plenty of examples in these sheets. Okay, looking at Zell Huber and Sabatini. Sabatini, a little bit more trustworthy, to be honest. Zell Huber, not very trustworthy. We thought maybe he was, um, but... The one we really relied on was Pfeiffer, Sanhedrin, and Giles. I mean, Pfeiffer, it was set up for a knockout. Sanhedrin has been experienced. Giles faced a guy on a huge layoff. This one made all the sense in the world to place, whereas Zell Huber kind of was that, that leg that had a lot of questions behind it. Okay, another example here. Um, Vol- we went back to this one before, the two parlay strategy. Volk, Izzy, Muniz. Three pretty trustworthy fighters. I mean, Muniz, probably, the, he's the lowest end of that one for sure. Um, I mean, but he's fighting Uriah Hall. How untrustworthy is Uriah Hall? Very. Um, you got great opportunity there. Coming down to the other parlay, Gary and O'Malley. A lot of questions behind that fight. Is Gary as good as he says he is? Is O'Malley uh, actually good enough to beat Pedro? These are the type of questions you gotta make one parlay your feel like lock of the night, and your second parlay the more questionable but maybe possible value play. Okay, next we got unit control. We want to distribute our money correctly. So the main idea, you know, don't let all of your units add up on the final fight or on one fight. Um, on this fight specifically. We really trusted Randy Brown. I mean, it was a way closer fight than even I anticipated. Um, he obviously made some crucial mistakes. But um, we had two units adding up on him. In my mind, behind a minus 300 favorite, two units is kind of the max you should have behind somebody like that. I think if you get into the minus 400 category, it's okay to have like two and a half. But you really don't want to break that number. I mean, it's you're either going home super happy or like super pissed off. So... Try to stay in between a good range of units on each person and also units per card. If you don't like the card, don't place so many units on it. For example, we have five units on this. We don't really trust all the results that the they're showing us here. Um, we really like the Sanhagen song card. We're going to place a little bit more units. We're going to distribute uh, two units behind Sanhagen with the rounds here and also two units behind the Feely fight. We think that that one has chance for most value. Um and also the Basharat one. But, you know, watch out. Don't be placing three units on somebody. You're going to be set up to uh, go home really pissed off a lot of the times, especially when it's parlays. Um, but, yeah, unit control is a big deal. And uh, don't build up your bets as you're going on. I mean, a rookie mistake I made, uh, I'd place, like, ten times the amount on the final fight versus some of the prelims. And I'm like, why did I ever do that? You know, it just comes with lack of experience. You feel uncomfortable placing a, a large bet on someone small, but over time, it's actually more successful. Okay, trust your gut and don't bet with fights you're uncomfortable with. Okay, prime example, low levels fights like we were talking about. You don't ha- you don't feel good about it. I mean, look at this Dern versus Yan card. How many people picked above 70% on this fight card? It's an insanely low number. People did horrible on this card for picks. Um, Bet-wise, you know, there's 12 fights. There was 13 fights. We narrowed it down to a couple we really nailed down on, and we did well. 
like our picks on that was like three or four right out of 12. It was god awful. But if we can narrow down what we actually have a good gut instinct with and with these new bad fighters, we got to we got to stay away from these people that just ruin our cards. Um so, you know, trust your gut and uh if you don't have a good feeling about it, don't do it. And if you do have a good feeling about it, put a unit behind it, you know? Okay, last one. Do your research and have fun. Okay, if we're looking down the pipe at 280, you know, do your research right now. You don't know who some of these guys are. Do it right now. I mean, uh, what you're going to find is the more research you do, the more, you know, look at tapology, look at those, uh, every fighter's record, how they win. When you put in the research and it pays off in a win, it feels great. But if you just randomly place bets and you're losing you're not going to feel good. Um, and uh, don't let emotions get into it. I, I know Charles Oliveira, a lot of people are on him just because, you know, they love him. But at the same time, be careful with your unit sizing. If you're placing three units on this guy, don't be too emotional. You know, for us, I think we want to hit a little bit of each category. This dude by finishes in these rounds, and uh, Islam really hasn't been finished before by a submission he'd been finished by a knockout you may as well try knockout um but you know have fun with it uh the research aspect actually adds more fun than you would think and uh overall may help you down the road and uh yeah okay guys just want to give you guys this video um help you guys as well as you know ourselves if you guys have more input on how you think certain strategies work out let us know in the comments. Um, and yeah, uh, like, subscribe, comment, other things like that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys appreciate this research that we've been doing. I know it's not extensive statistics and all that, but it's basic things to nail down simple mistakes you may, might make week after week. So uh, yeah, here's uh, every single card's history that we've had, our totals, you know, Stay tuned to that Instagram and get all those bets early. Um, if you guys ever want to DM me, I literally will send you most of what we have early. And uh, let's just keep the win streak going. We're on four weeks. We're going in a big roll here. And let's just stay tuned in for 280 and uh, win these bets. All right, guys. Peace. No, I know. It doesn't matter from the trenches. I'm built like this. The old doubt to me, I couldn't do it. The old said I couldn't do it. Look at me now.